Welcome to the Successfully Simple Show, the overwhelmed freelancer's guide to making more while doing less. I'm your host, Erin Flynn, and I've been running my own freelance business since 2012, making every mistake along the way so that you don't have to. On this podcast, we'll be diving into ways that you can simplify your business, establish clear boundaries with your clients, and minimize your work hours while maximizing your profit and your life. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Successfully Simple Show. I'm your host, Erin Flynn, and I'm here today with my friend, Krista Miller. Krista is a WordPress developer for designers. She's co-host of the Get Back to Design podcast, host of the Summit Host Hangout podcast, and owner of Summit in a Box. In her development business, Krista specializes in collaborating with designers to take care of the development, allowing them to simplify their businesses and spend more time doing what they love, which is design. At Summit in a Box, she teaches business owners how to skyrocket their revenue, grow their email lists, increase visibility, and connect with industry experts through connection and value-focused online summits. She is also the mom to a spunky one-year-old and is always working to find the perfect balance between being a mom and running two businesses. Krista, you do it all. How? How? That's the first question, how? <laughs> you know what? I, I don't really know. <laughs> it's, it's something that like I'm always trying to figure out. And there are some times when it's all going really well. And other times when I feel like the world's on fire, you know? So like right now is one of those better times. And I feel like it comes down to working a consistent schedule, um, weekly sprints and time blocking, literally discipline like I don't have time to make excuses and say I don't feel like taking action no it's taking action or you're in trouble Um, an incredible team and a husband who helps a whole lot and I'm sure we'll dive into some of those things but that is basically how the juggle happens that is awesome I just I always am looking at like what you're doing and I'm like how how is Krista doing all of this because I don't even have a kid. I do have two businesses, but I don't have a kid, but it just seems like you are always so consistent with everything that you put out. And you say that that's a discipline thing. That's kind of forcing yourself to do that. Yeah. I, it drives me crazy when I hear someone say that they want to do something and then it comes with a, but it's like, if you want to do it, just do the thing. Like, and I know that's probably like, that's just my personality type. Or if I say I'm going to do something, I do it and it's a habit I've created. And if there's something I want to do, I break it down into tasks. I set due dates and I hit the due dates. Like I don't make excuses. I don't push stuff off till later. I do it. And so I know a lot of it comes down to discipline for sure. I think I'm very much the same way because it, it also really kind of, um, I, I get frustrated when I see people that say, oh, I don't have time for this. And I'm like, actually, you don't you're not prioritizing it. Yes. You're not making that thing a priority. You're putting something else above it. And sometimes you certainly should have, you know, other priorities than your business. Like your family always comes first and then your business. But if scrolling, you know, through Instagram is what's coming in front of you making a great income, then that's just nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that would be your problem. <laughs> All right. So you, you mentioned your husband, but do you have a team? Do you do daycare? How do you work all of that? Yes, I have all the things. So I have an absolutely incredible team, small but mighty. I have two virtual assistants and a design assistant. And my VAs do, do pretty much everything. Like I do my client work. I do things that require me to show up, like podcast interviews or videos, Um, but everything else my VAs do, like they're doing all of my, um, like they're getting all my blog posts and podcast episodes ready to schedule. They are doing client onboarding. They're managing my inbox. They're doing my bookkeeping, like everything that does not require me, they are doing. And then my design assistant is the reason that the things I do look pretty because if it was me, it it would just be a train wreck. So they, they help me so, so much. Um, I couldn't do everything I do without them. Uh, in addition to them, I also do have daycare. My daughter goes to daycare for four hours each morning. Uh, and then she also, she still takes one nap a day. So she gets home from daycare. We play a little bit. She goes down for a nap and then I get to work again. Um, so that gives me about, oh, five and a half hours of work per day. And then if I really need to, like if I'm feeling really inspired and want to, or if I'm feeling behind on something, my husband is really great. If, if he can see that I'm stressed about work, he'll take her out of the house. They'll go to the park. They'll go visit a family member, like 
during an evening or on a weekend so I can get a little extra work in, which definitely helps. Uh, we try to keep that to a minimum because I do want to, like they're more important to me than anything I've got going in business, but it's nice to have a little flexibility when it's needed for sure. That's awesome. So two VAs, daycare and a fantastic spouse. That sounds like a dream. <laughs> I think. <laughs> it works. Um, have you, when you were kind of like figuring out, I mean, obviously like when you were pregnant, you had a while to kind of figure out like what you wanted to do. Did you know that that was always kind of like, did you have VAs before or did, was that something that you brought in um, once you had your daughter? How did you kind of sort that? Yeah. So before my daughter came along, I had one VA and my designer for much, much fewer hours than I have them now, but it was nice to already have that foundation in place. Um, I very recently brought on a second VA because I had my other one maxed out with her availability. Um, but I, having my daughter helped me figure out what I really have to be doing and what, what I don't have to be doing, whether that means outsourcing or just like stopping altogether and getting rid of in my business. Um, the daycare part wasn't something I planned on. I always thought I'd want to be that mom who is home all the time with their kid and, you know, maybe working a little during nap time and in the evening, but oh no, I need my free time. Daycare is, I love daycare. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, no qualms with that now. So that's something that I adjusted when she was born, when she was, I think, 10 months old, 10, somewhere in there, around 10 months old is when she started going to daycare for four hours a day. And um, that's definitely been a game changer, but it's it's nice to have the freedom that we do with these kinds of businesses to to make those adjustments when we need to, whether it's hiring more help, more or less daycare, you know, getting creative with ways we can make more time to do what we need to do. Yes, and I think that's something that we are so, since we run our own businesses, we're so fortunate that we can, you know, set how we want that to be, because for you, daycare is excellent for somebody else. Maybe they want full-time daycare, like all day long. Maybe they want no daycare, but they can make those decisions because they're running their business and they're in charge of not just their business, but their life in a way that, you know, in a traditional nine to five, we just can't be. So that's one of the huge perks of running your own business or two businesses. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is great to have that freedom for sure. Awesome. So how obviously with a young daughter and daycare, you're kind of organizing things around her. Um, how do you, how do you do that? How many hours do you work each week or do you divide like things you mentioned she takes a nap and then you go back to work? How does, what does your typical day look like then? Yeah. So I'm really set with my schedule. I, I do weekly themes and then daily time blocking. Um, so each I, I usually figure four weeks in a month, even though sometimes a little fifth one sne sneaks in there. Um, but generally, two of those weeks are dedicated to my custom development work. I have one week dedicated to my podcast and then one week dedicated to my um, membership for Summit in a Box. And that just helps me get things done much more quickly. And I don't feel scattered because I do have so many things going on with two businesses plus an extra podcast that doesn't really fit in with either one of the two businesses that I, I, it got to a point where it was just too much for me to handle, but the weekly themes have seriously saved my sanity. And then within those themes, I do time blocking. So even if it's not a development week for me, I still have retainer clients, uh, development retainer clients. So I do two hours of development retainer work every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, I do have little marketing blocks in the morning. And then the afternoons I set aside for whatever that weekly theme is. And of course, you know, I, I check my email two afternoons a week. So that kind of sneaks in. Um, and there might be other things that pop up here and there, but I'm really focused on whatever that week's theme is. And I don't let myself usually move on to other random tasks until I feel like I've accomplished what I need to for that day. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. And I absolutely love the weekly themes. I love blocking, you know, time where you're like, this is, this is when I'm doing podcasting, or this is when I'm doing client work. I think that for our brains that just works so much better than trying to like switch in between different things, even in a given day. Um, I, I know we can chunk time in, in days too, and that works for some people, but I also really think if you can have a week dedicated, just getting something done you're going to get it done in that week because you're not going to be pulled in so many different directions. Yeah. That's something I just started doing over the past about month and a half. And seriously, the, the, I don't know, level I'm able to think at even like is the way my brain feels after a day of work is just so much different. I don't feel like 
I'm like trying to walk through jello by thinking anymore just because I haven't been ha having to switch between tasks all day long. I was focused on one thing and then feel good about the, pro the progress I made instead of getting done with work being like, what did I even do today? Because it was a whole bunch of little tiny tasks. I had this big chunk that I was able to say I got done for one project and it's, it's incredible. I love that. And I'm also that person who loves to like check things off a list. And when you can like have one focus for like a day or a week and you can just like make a big cross through it. Best feeling ever. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> now, earlier you mentioned um, working with your team and things that you could delegate to them, but also things that you could stop doing. So did you find that there were some things that were just time wasters in your business or who were or, or that were not great return on investment for your time and how did you stop doing those things yeah so when i this this was this happened because i found out i was pregnant and i was like oh how am i going to keep doing everything i'm doing and have a baby and my answer was i'm not like i literally cannot so i had to go through and i did like a super nerdy audit of everything i was doing and i came up with a terrifying list of things i needed to stop doing um, i had been publishing weekly youtube videos for six months i was constantly posting on twitter like you know 10 to 20 times a day i was posting uh, in all kinds of facebook groups my facebook page was active i was doing all of my own pinterest like i was doing Everything that an expert said you needed to do, I was doing those things. I was doing um, weekly blog posts on three different websites because at that time I had a different second business. Um, and basically all of those things stopped. Uh, I stopped doing YouTube, which was the scariest part. I stopped using um, Twitter and Facebook as marketing methods. I outsourced my Pinterest. Um, I dropped my blog posts for all three blogs down to every other week. And I just recently dropped down my development business blog to once a month and newsletters along with that. Um, and that saved such an incredible amount of time. And I'm not going to say it wasn't terrifying because it was, I was pretty sure my business was going to fall apart, even though I could say, okay, these things that I'm keeping, which for me was Instagram. Um, that was the biggest thing and keeping my email list warm. I was like, these are where I'm getting clients and leads and income. If I keep doing this, it's okay. It was still terrifying to get rid of all those other big things that people were saying you had to be doing. Um, so really I did just like, I just stopped. It was a decision I had to make. I had to face face my fear, but I'm so glad I did. I was actually able to do uh, the math. I wanted to do it um, for a newsletter I sent to my list. And I saved $10,000 the first year by stopping those things. So not only did I save myself a ton of time and probably make more money because I could focus more on the income generating things, but I saved $10,000 on you know expenses related to those things that weren't doing anything for me as I later found out when nothing exploded when I stopped doing them. Well, I think that's one of the things that we all get so caught up in is like doing well all of the things, but feeling like we have to be on every social platform and putting out this content all of the time when really probably there is one social platform or there's one marketing method that is bringing in most of our clients, which is resulting in most of our income and probably is one that we enjoy more than the others anyhow. Yes. I find that was the case. Oh my gosh. Yes. I was, I was real glad to let go of YouTube. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. People may have noticed my YouTube is slowly dying a very painful death. <laughs> I keep trying to revive it once in a while and it's just not going to make it. Yeah. Let it go. <laughs> so what, after doing that audit, I love super geeky audits like that. I do them in my own business on a regular basis. Um, what did you find were the most profitable activities to actually focus on for you, which of course will be different for other people, but what did you find were yours? Yeah, so for my development business, it was literally just making more time for actual client work, which sounds really obvious, um, but I was spending so much time doing other things. I was having to take fewer projects. When I opened up my time, could take more projects. Obviously, that means more people paying me. And for my Summit in a Box business, it has turned out to be getting in front of new audiences because that audience is still pretty small. It's a relatively new business. So every time I can get in front of a new audience, whether it's a podcast interview, speaking at a summit, doing some kind of collaboration, that is so worth my time. And since those are all like passive income, I'm saying in air quotes, passive income products, the, the audience is what I need for that. So they're very different for both businesses, but... Um, hopefully that gives a good examples for people to go off of as well. 
Yeah, that's great. I absolutely love that. So anybody listening can, you know, think about their business and maybe where they might want to focus too, but also they should do their own super nerdy audit. (laughs) They should. It's fun. (laughs) Now, what would you say um, is the biggest thing or that has allowed you to create, you know, like that you've done like in your business and your life that has allowed you to create not one, but two actually profitable businesses while having a one-year-old daughter and a husband and family and, you know, all of these things. <laughs> what was the biggest change or thing that you've done? Uh, yeah, it was definitely getting out of the mindset that I needed to listen to everyone else and do everything and just getting really intentional about where I was focusing Uh, focusing on the things that were making me money and moving my business forward and literally eliminating everything else. If something is not benefiting my business directly, I am not going to do it. And I know that probably sounds really simple, but I bet if you sit down and look at all the actions you're taking in your business, maybe track your time for a week or two, sit down, look at those things. And if you can't draw a line from that to money or that to, you know, the goal, you main goal you have for your business, get rid of it. And you'll be really surprised at how many of those things there are. Oh, there are, there are so many. And it's, again, a terrifying thing to do, but also the most like freeing experience. And when I finally let my YouTube die, I'm sure it will just be like this weight lifted off my shoulders. It will. You should do it right now. (laughs) Doing it now. If you are listening to this and I still am putting out YouTube videos, not my podcast on YouTube, because that will be a thing, but YouTube videos of me talking to you, I want you to leave me a comment and tell me to stop. (laughs) (laughs) I can help you that. All right. This was a fantastic. Thank you so much, Krista. I love this. Where can we find you online? I know you have multiple websites that we can go check out. Yeah. For my development business. So if you're a designer, my development business is at KristaRay.co. And if an online summit is in your future, I'm over at summitinabox.co. Awesome. We will link those in the show notes. Thank you again, Krista, so much for joining us and giving us insights into your business and how you simplified it. And we will see y'all next episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Any links mentioned in this episode will be included in the show notes. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and subscribe on whatever platform you like to listen to podcasts on. And if you really enjoyed the show, please leave me a review because it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much. Now go take action.